Well, as I said, you know, not truly understanding that word, but love for me means living one vibrational energy. If it's L O V E, living one vibrational energy. And then when you couple that with be me, live one vibrational energy, body, mind experience, that's where I started to understand that in this experience that I was going through. So when we talk about unconditional love, wow, what I've wow, what I've learned is just truly incredible. So let me bring you in to what I would say is unconditional because I'm a man, right? I'm, I've been told to, <clears throat> you know, control everything, be the master of everything. And you do what I say and all of these things. And uh, if you don't get it, there's an argument and all of these things. So I hated being a man in, in that sense of it. I was hate how I was told to be a man. And my upbringing was, you know, you, you use these all the time to um, get things done. But as the, progression, as the progression went on, this is the interesting thing, because when you say relationships, relationship is the key word. It is the greatest word. And it's a word that is not 100% truly understood. You know, I've got a relationship with my body. I've got a relationship with my mind. I've got a relationship with my experience, my uh, energy. I've got a relationship with the world. I've got a relationship with a girlfriend. I've got a relationship with my mom. And, and the, the list goes on. So relationship, yeah, trying to understand what that is. The being me is the relationship. That's the relationship that I was seeking. That was the love that I was trying to understand. Now, when it came down to actually a relationship turning up, I've never chosen a relationship in my life. I have no, she must be dark or she must be blonde or she must be <laughs> five foot three or whatever it is. And I've worked with some of the most amazing, beautiful women across the world. And um, whoever shows up for me is enough for me. And I'll tell you for why, because that, has been that person has been given to me that wasn't because i asked for that relationship to come into my life that is a triangle from something that i've put up there to somebody that i'm going to meet and you're right you know when we sort of we put out into the universe or we put out into the spirit or god whatever you want to call it a relationship comes into play and delivers the answer <clears throat> So, I'm a man, you're a woman. Man meets woman, woman meets man. We, we kind of call that a relationship. But I found out something that is absolutely blown my mind. And the reason why I've stayed away from the YouTubes for the last nine, uh, nine months is because I awakened again and again and again and again. And what happened is the person that I'm living with in this house who we just met was it by coincidence was it because i needed a relationship was it because i needed love no this person is a person that i would say was heaven sent and i was meant to meet and i'll tell you for why because what happened is at that moment, I thought, I'm a man, she's a woman, we do man and woman things, you know, but then it started to show something else. And here's the thing, this ain't nothing to do with man and woman, because I'll argue the fact that says, am I a man? Prove it to me. Am I a man? Prove it to me you're a woman. Prove it to me you're a human being. But here's the thing I've discovered. This person that I'm in, in this area that I'm in, is called New, uh, New Hampshire. It's called Hampshire. Now, I come from London. I've never really heard of Hampshire at all. I'll try and keep this as brief as I possibly can because it's just phenomenal. And um, so I live near Portsmouth, which means that's where the boats used to leave. And, you know, it's a big shipping area and things like that. Once you start to awaken more, you get the information, as you know, we said earlier on. 
it just so happened that her family and my family was married 400 years ago and 500 years ago. And from this place of Hampshire, we both boarded, her family and my family, boarded a boat that set sail and we created New Hampshire. Right? And I found the passenger boat list, right, from 1600 and whatever it was. And her family sitting on the boat, my family sitting on the boat. So is this just a girlfriend or a, a relationship? Is this just a person that I've met out of the blue? Oh, hell no. There's a, there's a whole new story. So coming back here, my whole entire family from the 1500s are buried not six feet away from me. Now, I've realized that these people that I thought my family was useless, I thought they was idiots, they must be, because look where we are now, I used to say to myself, oh, no, no, no. I come from a, an incredible lineage. So for me, the awakening was, what is your lineage? And so therefore, my, my lineage takes me right back to um, uh, King Edward III, so I come from royalty. And so therefore, as I awakened and I came out of that, even the spiritual uh, connotation of what's going on, properly on the soul's level, I am the soul of all souls, right? And so therefore, all of these people that I was meeting, even in my dreams, even in my visions, uh, whether I was awake or asleep, when this information started to come through and I started to find books on my family because they're incredible people and you find yourself in these places where I used to go to a church I don't know why I went to the church I just felt like going to the church I'm not religious in it or anything but I used to go to a church and I used to sit and I think I don't even know why I'm sitting here and then 25 years later I find out that my one of my uh, ancestors was the archbishop of that church and then there was another church that I went and used to sit in, just felt comfortable, don't know why, just used to go there. Found out one of my other ancestors was the archbishop of that one as well. So we created uh, in England uh, the Catholic nation, and it still exists today. And then I found out that um, we owned all the land. And I had to do a seminar. I'd come from um, Spain. Somebody saw me in a seminar. They asked me to go and do a seminar for them. And I was driving to their place and I'm going through this town called West and East Islesley. And I thought, that's very strange. That's weird. That's my name. And so therefore this begun this thing. And then as I delved into it again, the reason why we owned that land, I took my name. I found my name and it went right back to 840 something right? So that was the soul. The soul was showing me who you think you are. You're not. So here was the land where it all began for me. So this person that's in my life, God forbid if I looked at her as a relationship or even as a woman, because it's gone way beyond that. And that's just the shorter version of why do we meet people? What do you think is because you're lonely? Do you think it's because you want love? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. And I've actually taken it to a place where if I've, I've got to take it to the place that if somebody kills somebody, that's not just because of coincidence. There's something there that's gone on with one soul family and another soul family and them two have met up and returned the favor. Because the information that I have discovered, I've, you know, I've come from, uh, you know, when I was started doing all of this on, it was about God and it was about Jesus, the way that I was dressing, the things that I was into. It just didn't make sense. I was a hairdresser. I was into fashion and makeup. That's what I did. But then when my family lineage started to uh, show itself to me, I come from a long line of preachers. And I come from a long line of scribes as well. And two of my family edited the Bible. So when I look at my work, I'm creating the Beamy Bible. And I had to ask myself, well, why am I creating the Beamy Bible? I'm not interested. 
I created a makeup range. I created the new looks for the winter and the summer and the autumn and things like that. So the more and the more I was seeing these pictures of my families, um, I thought, my God, I know you. So anyone that's, you know, where we sort of say we've had a past life, I've got to go beyond that because I thought I was having a past life as well as. But no, for me, the, that past life was living in me. So, and then I also found out no matter what country I went to, no matter how much I tried to run away from this awakening and becoming the healer that I became, it only worked out that every area that I lived in, I found all the information of the addresses from all of these preachers and all of these amazing people right up to royalty of where they lived. And do you know what? I lived basically round the corner from each and every one. So what I thought was my journey, what I thought was a great idea, hmm, I think I'll go to Spain. Let's go to Spain. Why am I in Spain? No idea. I just think I'll go to Spain. Then I find out that we come from a lineage of um, dominion, uh, di order of preachers, of dimin uh, dominion order of preachers, right? So am I there because I want to go to Spain? No, my soul's journey has taken me there because it's saying, this is where you come from. This is where this preacher ability has come from. And so therefore, all of the places, now I live, land, I live just down the road from uh, Stonehenge and Glastonbury and all these ancient sites. Why do I live there? I've no interest. I wanted to be in London where all the fashion was. But all of my preachers, They've been to these places. They have preached in these places. Even when uh, one of the famous preachers was um, King Henry VIII's uh, spiritual advisor. And my ancestor was the one that buried um, God, whoever uh, King Henry VIII's wife was. He was the preacher that buried her, uh, Antoinette, I think, or something like that. So now when I look at me, and I look at, I'm a spiritual director of Beanism. I've got the ceiling code. I bring a, a God code, a, a new level of consciousness. What it is, the awakening for me is not just me. I am the soul of souls. And all them souls that created whatever they created resides in me. So when I started to awaken, I tapped into the intelligence of that DNA. And in that DNA was a book. And as that book started to awaken, the information started to awaken. And of course, it started to flood out. But of course, I'm thinking it's coming from here, there and everywhere. And of course, it's, 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 it's a two-way thing. When you're awakening, you, you will see a lot of spirit and you wonder why you're seeing this spirit. And what I found out is was, they were reminding me. Now, it wasn't for me to become the psychic, the medium, the clairvoyant. They was just gifts that we have anyway. It, it was something that we all have. And they were showing me. But I thought it was coming from everywhere else. But what was going on, it was the saying, we want you to remember who you were before you came here. So I'm now at that place that turns around and says, yeah, I know God. I know God personally. I could turn around and say, yeah, I know Jesus personally. I could say I know all of them personally. Why? Because I come from that energy in the first place. We come into this world. We have free will. We live our lives. We meet relationships. Some you like, some you don't like, some you get on with, some you don't get on with. And so therefore, what I've realized is now that each and every person that I've met, the code is there. So when I turn around and say this, the, the person that's in this household now, her name is Hughes. And when I was in Spain, I was living with a girl in Spain, and it just so happened her name was Hughes. And it was like, wow, well, how can that be possible? Here's the truth behind it. The originality of my name is Hughes Lee, not Isles 
Lee. So these two people with the surname of Hughes were letting me know that the originality of my name was Hughes Lee. In fact, Hughes Lee. And so therefore, each person does bring that message. And to be awakened is to recognize what is this person really? Who is this person? Where have they been in my life? Because once you start to understand, even if I put a message out and I want a message back, I'll guarantee you it's coming out of the lips of this being. And that for me was what awakening was all about. Now, I can go back and, and, and find in my family, we started revolutions. So where am I now? I'm in the place of starting a revolution. One of my ancestors also um, 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 broke in to the Vatican, broke into the, I shouldn't even be saying this really, <laughs> broke into the Vatican and stole a book that was under lock and key. And it's now in Oxford um, University. And it was all about, um, a, a, about spirituality and no one was supposed to see it. One of my fa uh, family members stole that book. And this is where Catholic is, I can't even say the word, that Catholicism sort of kind of originated from, not originated truly from, but started here in England. And it was my family that also started that. So when I look at myself, am I Trevor Riley? God, no. This, it goes way beyond who I am. Am I a man? Oh, for, no, for God's sake, no, I'm, I'm not a man at all. Am I a human being? No, there's no evidence of that, that I'm actually a human being. Because what I have discovered, it, it's blown my mind beyond beamism. It's blown my mind be, beyond psychic medium and clairvoyance. And I, I'll let someone else speak in a minute because I can just run with this all day long. But... When it comes to understanding and um, about healing, and you know, you said about healing your tooth and things like that. Wow, God, I've taken the healing beyond something that I just didn't even think was possible. And you know, and we'll talk about that a little bit late, uh, a little bit later of the miracles that I've actually performed. And that's where I come in with the word of just naturalness. And I think that every being and every soul has this incredible uh, healing gift that we call miracles. But I shall still turn around and say it's natural. And so therefore, in this awakening, the more I've discovered that I am the soul of all souls and all of these souls are contained within me. To me, that's my library. And nobody teaches that, not even science, even science is still telling us to a point other than Greg Braddon and people like Bruce Lipton, you know, they're, they're still turning around saying, no, only two strands of the DNA work, the, the rest is junk. Well, sorry, I'm afraid God did not put junk in me and it didn't put junk in anyone else. And I think that's one of the biggest tricks that if you cannot get into your own DNA, and that's where the intelligence begins, because intelligent consciousness awakening body, mind, energy, which is I see be me. So I don't see humans. I see be me. I see the intelligence. I see the, the uh, inner consciousness. And inside I see is an inner compass. And when we learn to um, understand that inner compass. It doesn't matter where I go. It doesn't matter where I try to escape. It doesn't matter if I'm meeting somebody by coincidence. There isn't no such thing. I'll leave that right there because it's, let's see what you've got from there. But there is no coincidence for good or for bad. Even if people have treated me really bad. Oh my God, I love them. You know, I hate my wife for having an affair. And, uh, you know, be honest with you, I wish they're dead every day of my life. Her name was Denise. I couldn't even bear to hear the name Denise. You know, if anyone came near me with that name Denise, of course, it just brought up the emotions. Uh, even if somebody was a Sagittarian, which she was for, oh, my God, please go away. I'm not interested. But now when I look at my wife and uh, my ex-wife, you know, I love her so much and I love her. And I still remind her, I said, you know, thank you so much for having that affair. 
because if you didn't have that affair, I would have never, ever have discovered the truth of who I am. So when we believe something is going really, really bad and somebody's really upset you or somebody's even tried to kill you or tried to maim you or whatever it is, oh my God, you've got to thank them because they was brought on that planet to do that. And the more injuries that I went through, I thought, yeah, let's bring it on. Because an injury to me is the healer's toolbox. And I can't speak from that healer's toolbox if I've never experienced what I'm talking about. So I only speak about what I know from my own healer's toolbox that says, can I heal that? Yeah, no problem. I can do that because I've done it many, many times. Do I understand what enlightenment is? Yeah, because I understood who I was to who I am now. Do I know what the kingdom of heaven within is? Yes, because I definitely know what the kingdom of hell is. And so therefore, do I know what the, what the kingdom of God looks like? I say, oh, hell yeah, I'm bloody living on it. And every day I wake up and I see the kingdom of God before me because if I don't recognize that this is the kingdom of God that God built for, for us to experience all of this. So I think the world has also set us up to say that the kingdom of God is way over there and you can't see it until you die. Well, no, 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 no. I want to see it here because it is here now. And the more that we're creating havoc and destruction and killing people, don't worry, you're going to a better place and it's called the kingdom of God. No, 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 no. That also is the biggest trick in the book that we are here actually destroying the kingdom of God. Tell me, where is there a better place than this in the entire galaxy? We haven't found one yet. We haven't. And so therefore... What is love for me? What is unconditional love? Oh, my God, I fell in love with a blade of grass. I can fall in love with a dead hedgehog with its intestines hanging out. I fall in love with, a, with a, an autumn leaf. I fell in love with a worm. I fell in love with a sparrow. I fell in love with just about everything. And why shouldn't I? Because when we bring it back into the relationship, People have not fell in love with life because they're still looking for a personal love. But when the awakening happened to me and I fell in love with life, oh, my God, it's a true saying that when divinity touches you and true divinity touches you, you cannot stop crying. And I cried for years because I was so ashamed of myself as being a human man and I didn't recognize the beauty of this place, even down to a pebble. I'm not interested in a diamond. Give me a pebble off the beach and I will cherish that. And that's what we're here for. And that's what we're missing. And if we don't connect back to this land, then forevermore, there will be war and destruction and killing of what we call humans or what I now call souls. So therefore, it's about connecting back into this land, every piece of dirt and soil. This is a miracle for me. I pick that up. I move that there. I put that back there. Do you know what? Miracle. That's a miracle in the making. Why is that a miracle? Well, because when I'm dead, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But while I'm alive and I can do that, to me, that's a miracle. So when I look at the word of miracle, it's a miracle that I'm here. It's a miracle that I'm speaking to you. It's a miracle that I saw a beautiful hawk sitting on my washing line today. And it was looking at me and I connected to it and I fell in love with something more than I've ever fell in love with before. And you know what? That hawk knew it. And it just stood there, not stood there, perched there for a good 20 minutes. And we just connected. And I just fell in love again. And that's what people are missing. So the more that we are broken, the more that we go into our internal self, it's a disguise so that you don't see the world that you're living in. And that, to me, is a real shame. So awakening the be me is just so that I can just see what a wonderful place, because when I go into the spirit and I say to uh, God, where's the kingdom of God? He's going to say to me or she or it's going to say to me, you just left it. 
And that's what spirit was trying to tell me. This is it. This is where it is. Yes, there's a spirit world. I completely understand that spirit world. But do you know what? This is also the spirit world. I'm talking to spirits. I'm talking to souls. I've known you before. You've known me before. We just don't remember. But the reason why out of 8 billion people that you've connected to me, anyone that I've connected to, there is a reason. If not, I would connect with a lot more people. And if you only connect with, what, 20, 30, 40 acquaintances, how many do you really know? Five, six, seven maybe? They're the most important people in your life. Even if they want to cutthroat you and stab you in the back, you've got to say thank you very much because that's the healer's toolbox. And I love it. And that's my reward. My reward was being stabbed in the back because it gave me the opportunity to be able to heal that as well. Wow. That's, that's great. That's really interesting. The synchronicities that go off. And I noticed since my spiritual awakening, the synchronicities were just everywhere to the, to, to the point where I couldn't deny it anymore. And, um, but I sure appreciate the way you've laid that all out for us. And Laura Lee, what would you like to add to that? Well, that's hard to, to follow that up. I made a few notes. Um, so you were asking about self-love, if I remember correctly, where we all started with that. I, I think it's a work in progress. Uh, I know for myself, I work on it every day. And I think that for myself and many people that I meet in this field, it's very good. It's very easy to give, but it's not good to receive. Like we, we forget about receiving. And mm -hmm. I think that being on this planet, it's all about balance. And part of my message that I teach is that we need to embrace it all because it makes you who you are in this moment. And as I've said many times before, all we have right is now. That word's already in the past, right? You get so many people worrying about the future, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen. But I, you know, two proverbial questions. One, my partner Dell had asked on a show, we had quite the discussion with four of us in an hour was, if you could go back in your life and change anything, would you? And if so, what? And I believe that I think all of us, except Dell might have changed one or two things, I think, but the, there was three women that work in the same kind of field as ourselves. They said, no, I wouldn't change anything, myself included because you know you can look at whether you want to look at it as the butterfly effect or anything but as soon as we change one thing everything could change I might not have the children I have the two very unique boys I was told I'd never ever ever have children so I say I didn't just win the lottery once I won it twice and my eldest being part of the LGBTQ community you've met him Karen uh, part-time drag queen adore the ground he walks and my youngest has severe autism and the reason I, I share that is, and I don't want to make, you know, very, very aware of, you know, people going through infertility, for example, or maybe I baby and adore animals <laughs> or, um, you know, maybe choosing not to be a parent for whatever reason. And that's okay too, but we've all looked after somebody or something that relies on us, for example, kitty there, or I've got my dog and my cat over here. So whether say you're a caretaker or a pet parent or a parent or whatever, I really believe that when, again, we get back to service to others rather than service to self, we start to understand unconditional love. And we start to understand that you know, what forgiveness is, what many things are, like my kids have been my biggest teachers, but my pets too, I adore animals as well. Because I believe if you ever want to see what unconditional love is, is look at an animal. <laughs> that, you know, there's a reason why dogs spell backwards, they say, you know, is God or it, it's not just dogs, it's, it's any kind of animal or seeing the beauty in nature. But my whole point is, it's a starting point, I think, for people when we try to look at self-love. Because 
I think what we have to convince ourselves, especially when we start this journey, is if we're able to do it for someone within our care or something in our care, is it we need to start turning that inwards. And I think with that being said, it starts really getting to know yourself. Who are you? Like you said, I think it was you, Karen, Trevor, you said quite a bit about this as well, but who are you? And if you don't know who you are, you know, it's an interesting thing to sit down and start journaling, asking yourself that question, not filtering it, just writing. Who am I? And whatever comes to mind, doesn't matter what it is, but take a good look at it. And if you've written a lot of, we, I always say we have the worst inner voice, the way we speak to ourselves, then most of us would never say to another person to their face. And why is that? Right? Now we can get stuck in victimhood and going back to childhood. And, you know, the, I, I've often said, and I know Karen's heard me say this is I don't think many of us in this field have had a Brady Bunch upgrowing or, you know, upbringing. Most of us have had a pretty difficult upbringing. It seems that I've met on this, this path. And I think it's because I think it was something you said in the beginning, Trevor, about it's, it was preparing us. It was preparing us for what was coming in the future, I believe. It helps Definitely. us have, yeah, it ha helps us have empathy and compassion for those around us that we're mentoring or teaching or following. And I, I think once you experience something, you really get, you, you get it. You really, really get it when someone is sharing it with you. But I think that it's unraveling what that inner voice is. Where is this coming from? And again, not getting stuck in the victimhood of it, because I think a lot of it we absorb as children from the age of zero days to up to seven, right? And we can always say our, our parents tried to do the best job they could. Now, it may not have been the best job with some people, but it's unraveling some of those belief systems is what I'm talking about. Taking a look at maybe why do I, why do I feel or I think the way I do? And looking at it, is this something acceptable? Is this something I'm okay with? And I'm not saying with judgment, but maybe you want to change that. And I'm talking about people that are newly awakened a place to start. I think the best place we can start though is celebrating the gifts that we have. I can't tell you, I don't know about the two of you, the amount of people I've met that when you ask them, what are you good at? No idea. Or, you know, trying to live in joy. I've been really using that message, especially after the last two years. And I always say you have to walk the walk of the talk of the talk that you do, myself mm -hmm. included. And how many people have no idea what brings some joy? And so then the next question I'll ask them is, what did you used to dream about as a child? What, you know, what did you want to be? What, um, what did you used to love to do? And what's stopping you from going back to that place? Because I think when we're in joy and we're in love, we start to discover a lot of things about ourselves and unraveling all that. Um, I always say even pain is the body's, the body's voice, if you will, whether it's emotional pain, physical pain, um, it doesn't matter what it is. It's, it's the body's voice saying, hey, this needs some attention here. And if you don't know how to heal it, doing some research, taking a look around, trying on a few different co coats, if you will, because I believe every one of us is a healer. I mm -hmm. really do. It just, it just depends on where you're coming from. Um, again, where are your gifts? Where are your talents? Because none of us were put on this earth without a gift and a talent. I really believe that. It's just a matter of how we perceive it. And I also believe that gratitude is an incredible place of where to start with self-love. You know, people say I have nothing to be grateful for. And then I've said to, you know, people before is, did you wake up this morning? Well, obviously I'm here. <laughs> yes, you're here. Did you have a roof over your head? Did you have a place to sleep? Were you able to have breakfast? Maybe were you able to have a cup of coffee? Whatever it is, and starting with the little things, because I think the more and more that we practice gratitude, again, you know, we use this term raising vibration. I know we haven't talked a lot about it here, but we hear it within our community. And I think it's so important. I think that's why we're finding each other because of raising the vibrational energy. And that includes, you know, staying in a place of joy, turning off the TV turning off uh, the radio, you know, starting to surround your yourself with people 
that are sort of on the same wavelength, wavelength, if you will, because I think when we do that, you cha- you tend to change your 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 perspective, if you will. For example, there's a study out in Science that was done quite a few years back that the people that somebody spends the five people that somebody spends the bulk of their day with doesn't have to be family doesn't have to be friends it could be work no matter what it is we start to become a lot like them so surrounding ourselves with people that are positive maybe that whatever you feel drawn to if we're working on this journey of self-love um again looking at what needs healing um again a lot of people you can go back to childhood because we absorb a lot sort of figuring it out healing the inner child looking at shadow work there's lots of different things there's cord cutting um grounding is really important uh we're here for a reason and again i believe that we're meant to live in balance i really do so there's some beautiful things getting out in nature there was this documentary that came out a few years ago and it was like this amazing new technique called earthing I think has been around for thousands of years. It's just like grounding. And for me, my higher, you know, being is God, if you will, but other people have other beliefs and I'm okay with that, whatever it may be. But what I, where I'm getting at with this is I think we were sent here with everything we need. We're not alone. I've often said, you know, whether you believe in your angels and your guides, they believe in you getting to know them, spending time in meditation. I call it my workspace. Um, anything you want to know or you want to have a class on, Spirit will show up. They'll, they're here to help you have make the best of the experience that you have here. And the other thing I'd like to remind people is we're not here by accident. Trevor, it was you that talked about this quite a bit. And it's true. There's no coincidences. We aren't no, no, here by accident. We're here for a reason. So sitting down and trying to figure that all out. And if you're not sure, all you have to do is give your guides permission. They respect that we have free will. Let them know. You don't even have to speak it out loud. You can say it in your head. I want to get to know you better. I give you permission to get to know you better. My angels, my guides and go on from there. It's a process. I believe it's a journey and, you know, I'm not perfect at it. I I don't think anybody's perfect at it, but I think that's all in part of the lesson and where we're meant to be. Lastly, I want to add that I think it's all about the way we look at what's happened in life. I can honestly tell you that out of some of the most horrific experiences I've had in my lifetime, that what it with perspective and time, when I've looked back again, Trevor, I'm going to build off what you said, saying thank you for it. Because when I look back on those times, it was like what was needing to be removed was removed out of the way to make something, the room for something better in my life. And the same thing that say I have to be in point, at an appointment and, you know, I get every red light or something happens and I'm late or I don't get something that I really, really wanted. Maybe it was, you know, a job or an opportunity. I look back on that and I say, thank you. Because when we look back, there was a reason why that happened. We may not be aware of why that happened, but I'll use the analogy. Say if I wasn't held up by five minutes, God forbid, I could have ended up maybe in a car accident. It could have been anything, but there's always a reason. And I like to look at it that way. And I think it comes with mindset. And regardless of whether we come from a half glass full or half glass empty type of mindset, nothing cannot be changed inner change has to come from within nobody can force you to change but I think once we start to realize that that we are capable of so much more than we ever thought was possible exploring that looking at that getting up every morning realizing it's a new opportunity and and what is there out to discover what can I even setting the goal of learning one new thing a day I mean there's so many things we can do so much work to do um, in the way of can we make this place a better planet? Absolutely. So when people say, why, what can I do? I'm only one person. There is a heck of a lot you can do. I'll leave it at that, Karen. Wonderful. <laughs> I want to apologize uh, for my kitty. Um, 
Every once Never in a while, apologize. she just wants me to get off the computer and she just runs around clawing everything up around me and scratching the heck out of my green screen. Oh. So I try picking her up and then she's a wiggly worm and I just don't know what to do with her. I, I could put her out and shut the door and then she'll scratch the heck out of the door. And it's really too cold to toss her outside. So I just um, want to apologize for that. Uh, she just wanted I to be involved her. A little bit. I, I want to, you know, what's really interesting that both of you have kind of touched on that I also want to touch on, and that is um, getting ourselves, and only we can do that for ourselves, but getting ourselves into that position where we can notice the beauty that's all around us. And I'll give an example. Sometimes I struggle with my phone. And, um, and you know, what I mean by that is, you know, social media, I can get sucked, it's almost like it takes my consciousness and sucks it right into the device. And I don't realize that an hour's gone by or two hours has gone by. And it just was using up so much of my time that I had to say, no, I'm not doing this anymore. I'll allow myself, you know, to check it in the morning, in the evening, I'll check it again, but there's no way I'm going to be spending hours and hours on my phone. And when I don't spend the time on my phone, I'm just using that as an example, it could be video games, it could be whatever, whatever our favorite distraction is, we don't realize um, you know, but what happens is when I put that down, I notice the birds, even in this cold weather out in the snow, jumping from, from branch to branch in the, in the tree out back. I notice the sparkle in the snow. Everyone's going, oh, damn snow. I can't wait till the snow's gone. And it's so beautiful. It is so incredibly beautiful. You know, in the summertime, sometimes I just want to go for a little walk. I'll sit in the grass and I'll just look at a spot. And at first, all I see is grass. And pretty soon, maybe I see some ants and they're doing a little job and they're carrying little twigs and things and they're all, all got purpose and order. And then I see another kind of bug, like a wood bug or something crosses path. And you know, there's no conflict. There's no fighting. They just all got jobs to do. They're looking after their own business. And I would miss all of that if I didn't buy out those opportunities to, to look at those things. And the same thing even goes with people I get pissed off at. What about all their beautiful qualities instead of turning them into a caricature that suits my, uh, my need perhaps to have a whipping boy or to be scapegoating? I'm missing all their beautiful, beautiful qualities. And that's one thing I've really noticed about this global love affair. Once we realize that the people that we're coming in contact with, and we don't even know who, who we're going to know one week to another, but it happens. And we realize their intentions are good. And we notice that they're doing their best. It's, it's impossible not to love them. It's such a beautiful beautiful thing I can't even explain how beautiful it is to the point where I'll cry out of gratitude that I've been that I that I'm witnessing these incredible beautiful things and all of this is going on regardless of what the mainstream media is telling us regardless of what our governments are doing and you know one of the biggest lessons for me to learn just being honest here full disclosure my guides or my higher self will often say to me, Karen, that's none of your business. So maybe I'm getting in a stew about something. Karen, that's not your business. Your Part of your job is to learn to mind your own business because there are forces of good versus evil that are playing out right now. And the universe is so much bigger than just Karen. Who am I to think that I'm going to fix everything? No. And who am I to think that everything should go the way I think it should go? And that goes back to what, what you were saying, Trevor, right? And that goes back to what you were saying, Laura Lee, how we have to um, take care of the things that we need to take care of. But really, um, I, I just find that the people that can put down the distractions and focus on, and you know, what you're looking for is what you're going to find. You want to find horror or you're looking for horror, there's no end to the horror you're going to find. You're, if you're looking for a heartache, there's no end to that. But if you're looking for beauty, there's also no end to this. And it doesn't matter where people live. All around the world, I have friends. 
uh, obviously online, but still I have friends. And those that love to appreciate, instead of going, oh, I can't sleep, they go, oh my goodness, look, the sun's coming up. The people that can do that are so inspirational, so loving to each other. And like I said, it's happening all around the world. And I just want to mention one other thing.